here from Faithfully Homemade. Today I'm going to show you 12 for different activities for Valentine's Day. So these activity centers are geared towards kindergarten or first grade students. And if you have a preschooler who is probably four years old and um, you know getting close to that kindergarten age, they may be able to do a few of these as well. So what I do is when I'm preparing and creating these activities, I look at standards for kindergarten and first grade, and that's how I, I make them. They are, like I said, Valentine's themed. However, they are math and literacy. So I have six activities for literacy and six activities for math. And then what I do is after I print them out and I put them into either plastic Ziploc bags like this with the label on there. As you can see, the labels come with the download. So when you download them, you can just stick the label right on there. And I print the label out on label paper and then I just go ahead and stick it on the bag. Or if you don't have label paper, you can just print it on regular paper and then just put it inside the bag and you'll be able to see it through the plastic. So, and it has the directions on each one as well and a little picture that kind of shows you how to do them with your students. So that's how I store them. And then another wet thing that I also do, I have a few of them uh, in these little pencil cases. So sometimes I put them in pencil cases and store them that way as well. You just can kind of like unzip it here and all of the, you know, things that you need are inside. So that's another way to do it. So Ziploc bags or pencil cases. And then I put them all into a bin labeled Valentine activities. And so these ones are gonna be a lot of fun to show you. I'm super excited. So here we go. I'm gonna show you all 12 of them. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you are some of the manipulatives I have here to use with these activities. And they are Valentine themed. The first thing I have here are some of these, these are stickers, they're foam, and they look like this. I got the ones that have monsters on them because I didn't want anything super girly because I have all boys. But obviously you could get, um, there's other ones that were, that were more girly-ish, but I thought, well, the little, you know, monster ones with the little hearts might be kind of cute. So I have those in here. And then I found these, these are little button hearts and they actually come in different sizes. So I thought not only could we use them for our activities, but then I could have the kids sort them by size. So we could do like large and we could do medium. Well, here's kind of a medium one. And there's like really tiny small ones, if I can get one out. Ah, it's way down there. There's a teeny tiny one, I don't know if you can see it there, teeny tiny heart. So there's just, you know, different sizes and we can have them sort them. And then I figure we could even sort them by color. Sorting is a great skill for little kids um, to, it's a precursor to math obviously and that kind of thing. And so, well, it's, it's part of math. And so once they can sort, they can do, more complicated things like patterning and stuff like that. So anyways, these were kind of fun. I thought these buttons were cute. Obviously, if you're working with a really small child, you'd want to take away the really, really tiny ones so that they don't put them in their mouth or anything. But okay, so then the other thing I have here as far as manipulatives go are these. These little manipulatives are actually supposed to be I think they're supposed to be for, here, I'll, I'll zoom in maybe so you can see a little bit better. I think they're supposed to be for like making little bracelets with those round, what are those, like rubber bands? They look like this. Um, but I thought that they would be good for little manipulatives. So they're, they're like a rubbery substance and they're just super cute. There's like some hearts and some bees and some ladybugs and things like that. So anyways, that is what I have as far as another good thing for manipulatives is if you can go get those candy hearts that they make at the you know grocery store, those are a great one. I don't have any, but I'm planning on getting some. Those would be a good manipulative. Okay, the first activity I'm gonna show you here is Valentine long vowel word flip. Okay, so it comes okay. with these long vowel word strips. I have a whole bunch of them. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold over the edge, if you can see that, like so. I laminated mine. And then you're going, so you're gonna fold it over so the child cannot see the picture that's underneath. And then you're going to give them a clip. This is a clip that I have, and I've attached the picture of the book with the heart on it. And the child is going to clip it on, or you can clip it on before you hand them 
hand the child the word. So the child has to read the word, so they're going to read cake, and then when they take the clip off, they're going to see if they were correct. So they'll flip it over and they'll see a cake. They were correct, so they can go on to the next one. So here's one. Okay, the clip is on there. Pipe. I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to see that I'm correct. So there's just a whole bunch of them. They're all long vowel words. Now, since I did make them uh, laminated, I can also have the child take a uh, marker and mark the long vowel. So this is clue. So the first U would be long, and the second vowel is silent. So the first vowel is long, second silent. That's how we would mark it. And then they could flip it up to see if they were correct. And they are correct. So they would close that one. So here I'm going to put a clip on this word when they read it. Whoop! It's fur root. First vowel sets name, second vowel is silent, so we cross it out. Fruit, take the clip off, flip it over, and here we have some. Okay, now I'm going to show you a math activity. This is called spin and build a graph. So it comes with a spinner and it comes with a graph. And all you need is some type of manipulative. So I'm gonna use these ones that I showed you earlier. And all they're going to do is they're going to spin. And whoever it lands on, if I have my spinner on there correctly, you can use a spinner like this that I purchased and add it to it, or you can just use a paper clip and a pencil. So they're going to spin, and whoever it lands on, so it landed on this girl, they're gonna tape it manipulative and put it in her spot. And they're just gonna keep on spinning, land it on her again. And as they spin, depending on who it lands on, it landed on this girl here, they're gonna just keep okay. on spinning. And as it goes up, up, they're gonna keep going until they can get all the way to the end of the, um, my spinner's not working very well. Anyways, I'll have to fix that. But they're gonna keep spinning until they get all the way, let's say um, I fill up a couple. My spinner's not working well, I'm gonna fix it. But they're gonna spin until they get all the way to the end. And let's say this girl gets all the way to the end. Then they have made a graph. So they're gonna see which one of these um, children here make it to the end of their graph and then they're going to look at it and you can ask them questions like well which which child has the most which child has the least how many more does this child have than this child and so on and so then you can ask all sorts of graphing questions once they have filled it up and then they can do it again so you can take them all off and they can start spinning again and they're going to just going to spin and spin until one of these gets all the way to the end and they have a winner, I guess you could say. <laughs> and they have built okay, a Okay, this next one is called Build a Shape Valentine. So it comes with a mat like this and it comes with cards. The only thing you need to add to it are some of these. These are, you know, like little pipe cleaners. I have red and pink ones here just because I wanted to make it match our theme. And what the children are gonna do is they're gonna take a card here I have, I'll show you the different cards. I have you know, circle and triangle and rectangle. You can see that there. So they're going to pick a card. I have a circle right there. And they're going to take their um, pipe cleaner and they're gonna make a circle. Now uh, you can attach it by you know, having them kind of wrap it around. And then once they make their circle, they're gonna put it on their mat. So now I have built my circle. Then the child can flip the card now they are on And now triangle. I'm gonna build a triangle. So the child has to figure out how to make three sides. And they, these are super easy to bend. So they just kind of bend them into the shape that they're trying to do. I'm gonna connect it here. And then it's kind of easier to make it into a circle and connect it and then kind of fold the sides into your shape. And then they can make a triangle. So they're not only learning how to make this shape using their tactile, using their, their fingers, but then they're also learning the names of the shapes and so on. So here I have triangle, rectangle, pentagon, square. Square, Whoops. pentagon, heart, and so on. Ramen. This next activity Trapezoid. is called heart unscramble. And there's a few different steps to this one, so let's get into it. All right, first they're going to choose one of these characters with the mixed up letters on them. So I'm going to um, go ahead and choose this one. And then I'm going to, then the child is going to take the letters that are on here out of their hearts and put them in front of them. So I need a B and I need a U and I'm, oops, that one's upside down. Here's a U. And I also need a G. 
So then once I have that in front of me, the child is going to take these and move them around to try to make a word. So I know that my vowel is most likely going to be in the middle. So I'm going to put my vowel in the middle. So I have gub or I can move them this way. And now I have bug. I made a word. So these letters make the word bug. Then the last step is to look through their hearts. I wouldn't give them all of them at once. I'd give them maybe three or four to choose from. They're going to look through their hearts and they're going to find the word bug and they're going to put it down with it. So now I have completed that one and I can go on. So now I can get a new one. So now I have this one and I need the letters O-M-M. -M. So I will go ahead and do the same exact thing. I'm going to find O-M-M. -M. I'm going to move them around to make the word. It's the word mom, by the way. And then they're going to look through their hearts and they're going to go ahead and find the word mom. Next one is and called positional so, word hearts. Now I am going to use a pocket chart for this one. And what I would do is I would put this pocket chart up on the board and then they would be able to do this one standing up. However, you do not have to do this on a pocket chart. You can just do it right there on the table. What it is, is it has these cards here and you're doing positional words. So above, below, in front of, beside, between, and behind. So you would talk about those words and you would say the words and then the child would look at the cards and they would have to sort their cards. There's three cards for each one. So the way they sort them is they decide the position of the heart to the children. So you look at this card. What is the position of this heart to the child? It, it is behind the child. So they're going to put it with behind. Can you see that? Okay. And then um, a little bit of uh, glare. Sorry about that. And then uh, there you can see it. Then they would do the next one. So what is the position of the heart here to the children? It is between them. So you can see that there. And then um, this one is in front of. So it would go here. And this one is below the child. So it will go here. This one is next to or beside. So that one would go there. And then this one is above. So it will go here. And then there's more cards and they can continue sorting them. We are on to another spot. math activity. This is animal heart measurement. So the child is going to be working on measurement. So there's a few different things here. You're going to get a ruler of hearts that looks like this. There are 10 hearts on this ruler. So they're going to be using this um, ruler to measure. And then you're going to get a mat that looks like this. And then you're going to get a whole bunch of cards of different animals that look like this. Okay. And then the last thing you're going to get are these um, little number hearts right here. Okay. So here's what the child is going to do. The child is going to pick an animal. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this cute little line right here. And I put it down in front of me. And then I'm going to take my heart ruler and... Um, remind the child that you don't want to have any spaces so you line it right up to the edge and then yeah, I'll scoot it up for you can see and then they're going to count how many hearts tall this animal is one two three four five six seven he is seven hearts tall so then what they're going to do is they're going to look at their mat and they're going to find the lion and they have to find the hearts with the number seven on it and lay it by the lion on top of the white heart that's by the lion. So he is finished. Now I can pick another one. So they'll pick another animal. They'll measure the next one. And we'll see how tall that one is. And then they'll go ahead and find their number and put it next to it. until so all of the animals have been measured and their entire mat is covered. Okay, this one is called candy jar double consonant puzzles. And I laid out four of them here for you to see. So the children are going to be working on double consonants, FF, LL, ZZ, and SS. And they're going to try to match them up with the correct words. So this is a picture of a grill. And then I have grit here. So they have to match up LL with grill. And then they're going to match up fizz and mess and sniff. So that's an example of how they would do it. There's a whole handful more of these puzzles in here. So I would only give them a few at a time like I did here. Then if you want to extend the activity, another thing you can do is if you have a dry erase marker and you have laminated these, you could have the child write the letters on the line. So now that they matched it up, they can write grill or Another option is to go ahead and use your magnetic letters and have the child 
put the magnetic letters in the spot. So this is fizz. So I'm gonna put my two Z's in the spot. So instead of using the um, marker, you can use the magnetic letter. So that's just a way to extend the activity. You don't have to okay, do that. This first. next activity is called Be Mine Short Vowels. And you get two game ma uh, mats. So this one looks like this, and this one looks like this. It's basically the same game. You just get two options so that you can play it multiple times and in different ways. So um, I'm gonna use this mat for our example, but the other mat works the same way. It's just different pictures. And all your child needs is some sort of pawn. Okay, so I'm gonna use a manipulative, I'm gonna use a heart here as my pawn. And I'm gonna place that on my B. My goal is to get the B to the beehive. So then I'm going to, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin my spinner. And my spinner landed on you. So I'm gonna look at my pictures and I'm gonna to go to the very first picture that is a short U sound. So I have wig, cab, box, net, Rug. Rug is the first one I see with a short U sound. So I'm going to move my pawn there and then I get to spin again. This time I got A. So now I'm going to try to find a heart that has an A sound. So I have bus, cob, rib, ten, jam. Okay, so jam is the first one I found. So I'm going to move to that and I'm going to keep going. Okay, now I have A again. So mug, leg, cup van. I'm going to move to van. I'm going pretty fast here. So as you can see, you're just going to, they're just going to keep spinning until they get to beat the beehive. Then they can redo it again. They can put their, uh, their pawn on the start and continue on and do it again and again. And the other mat is the exact same thing. It's just this activity different is called Valentine Robot Sound Switch. So it comes with these cards. You see the robot there with the hearts and the different pictures on it. So you're going to pick one. And then what you need is either magnetic letters or a dry erase marker. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So the first one I'm going to show you with the magnetic letters. So you're gonna look at the first, the child's gonna look at the first picture and they're gonna make the first word. So that's a picture of a fan. So they're going to make the word fan, F-A-N, right there in the boxes. And then, I have to, th there's a little heart arrow here and it's pointing to the next picture. The next picture is a picture of a fin. So the child has to decide which letter do I need to change to make this word into fin. Well, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take their A and they're gonna change it to an I and now they have the word fin. Okay, so that one is finished. Another way you can do it is with dry erase markers if you don't have the magnetic letters. So here the first picture is a can. So I'm gonna make the word can. I'm gonna write it with my dry erase marker. Then, oops, the next picture is a picture of a cat. So I have to decide which letter do I need to change to make the word cat. I'm gonna change my N. So let's erase the N. And let's go ahead and make that a T. And there we go, now I have cat. So you can do it with the dry erase marker where they write it, or you can do it with the magnetic letters where they fill it in. And there's just a whole slew of these cute little Valentine robots switching the sound. They just have to change one letter each time to make it into a new word.